Ooh, welcome back to Zegrish 4K, and this is Total War Pharaoh Dynasties. Uh, this is the Mesopotamian trailer, and we're just basically going to take a look at it, and then uh, we're going to talk about it. But before we begin, I'd like to say, first say just thank you for stopping by and spending your time watching this video, and if you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you be very much appreciated by me. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and any bit, little bit helps. All right, and subscribing is a huge thing. <laughs> So I'm going to be watching it and jumping in and out for a little bits here and there. But I do like uh, they kept some of the Total War um, Troy stuff. Mostly the Unicards. I like that. The Unicards looks pretty good. Um, and the building uh, cards as well because they're nice and colorful and bright. They stand out. They got a nice background. Instead of like a plain white background like uh, I think Total War Warhammer has. I think a lot of Total War, or realistic uh, pictures and drawings. Like I'm trying to remember what other Total War um, building cards look like. And, uh, oh. well, some of them would look nice. But um, I like Troy's the most, believe it or not. Um, because it's nice and... It, it sticks out in your mind of what it is. Uh, red basically means military building, green means growth or economics, and blue means various other things, and purple means religion, and, like, and blue means government, purple means religion. You can make it simple connections in your mind. Do you know what I mean? Instead of what, uh, instead of like other stuff in, instead of like a plain white background and like maybe a different colors in the tabs of what to build but yeah I do like it I do like it Mesopotamia Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia. Yes. it's a whole new world to explore <laughs> Thank you, and conquer sir. I'm uh, Steve Coleman joined by Total Nikolov unearthing Mesopotamia's ancient empire you really seem Nikolov you seem less thrilled this time bro like come on Perk up, come on. This is... You got the shirt, you got the swag, you got the beard. Uh, uh, you got the beard done up right for this sort of thing. Come on, man. Get in there. Get in there. Earthing Mesopotamia's Get ancient pumped. empires. Let's start in Babylon. What makes them special? How do they play? Well, Babylonians are generally the faction that builds tall. They want to get prepared before they march off uh, on the offensive. So their buildings, for example, often combine different uh, effects, so you can achieve more with a single building. Their command allows them to suddenly increase their recruitment capabilities, which helps both when you defend your lands and when you attack your uh, enemies. And in addition, they have access to the city of Babylon, which is a one settlement province and is uh, rather huge. In addition to... That is great. I do like the fact that city of Babylon is its own like sort of province. I do like single province uh, cities because it's such a huge, if it's like a huge thing for for the, that part of the world, then making it its own province seems correct. Like, like for instance, if they're doing a Games of Thrones, uh, Total War, they would probably make King Landy its own province because that's, it's so big, it's just so massive, like, yeah, it would have its own province. It would be be a massive thing. And I also like his lamp in the background. It looks pretty cool. To that, they're relying on nice the Doppler Duke for a variety of bonuses that help them on the defensive, like unit upkeep and replenishment. Yes, so the Mesopotamian gods. We've got uh, Ninurta, Asher, Ishtar, Inshushanak, and Marduk, right? And they have dwellings. Can you tell us a bit more about those? Dwellings is um, an additional building that represents the home of a particular god and you can build a home uh, to a god in every one of your settlements uh, for an additional uh, drop of favor and some uh, god-specific effects. So you have your temples 
have your shrines. If you are praying to Mesopotamian gods, you have your dwellings. Mm -hmm. And this means that you can act. Okay, so workforce growth. Yeah, that's a workforce. Okay. I like that. Workforce is important. Because you need them to build stuff up. And I like the fact they're represented in the game. That's a good idea. Favor, that's, that's something else that uh, that transferred over from Troy, I'm, by, I'm guessing. I haven't played the game yet. I should probably play the game a little bit before I make this video. I do have it on Steam. I just never, just never haven't pushed the play button on it yet. Uh, I got it recently. I mean, what am I telling you guys? This? You don't care about that. Anyway, happiness... That's been like a constant in Total War games. That's pretty good. Actually maximize the favor tier to a god uh, with much fewer territories. By the way, I'm talking in a way to people who've never played uh, this Total War, but kind of assume that you've played the other Total Wars. So I don't have to explain what the other Total Wars are to you. If you don't know, uh, watch, just type in Total War, you'll find it. Which is very valuable everywhere. for the Babylonians in particular. Okay, so it sounds like the Babylonians are quite an inward-looking faction. Uh, Marduk's a good fit for them god-wise, but what ancient legacy would you say would best suit them? It would definitely be the ancient legacy of Hammurabi, the creator of one of the first Call of Wars. The ancient legacy of... Hold on. Uh, be the uh, ancient legacy... Uh, okay, Sargon the Great, and by the Law Garraker. Attend your grand ambition of becoming an immortal legend known by all. Ascribe your code of laws, bringing justice and prosperity. Okay, okay. Legacy of Hammurabi, the creator of one of the first code of laws. And this is what the player can do with the ancient legacy. They can have their own code of laws. And each law is a combination of effects that you choose from the list. And this might be both positive, which brings you bonuses, but also takes more time, and mm -hmm. or penalties. You can also put negative effects to reduce the time it takes for a law to uh, really? be efficient. And you can name them. That is so. That's so customizable. I like that. I approve of this. In addition to that, the more laws you have, the more Kuduro resource you uh, receive, and you can spend this to instantly research royal decrees or also research greater and more powerful effects for your law. It sounds like there's a lot of things going on on the campaign map than there is usually. Uh, and I'm comparing like Total War Warhammer. Warhammer, um, their campaign map is okay. Like, it's very simplistic. It's not terrible by any means. It's just like, you can tell that this is people's first Total War, is Total War Warhammer. Uh, so they're trying to make it as easy as they can make it for people. But I think I like Pharaoh because this is for uh, old veterans who've played at least a couple of Total Wars under their belt. So they know how to work the campaign. They know how to work um, the battles. So, yeah. Awesome. Great. Okay. So the opposite of an inward looking faction might be an ambitious one. Um, Hanni Galbat has entered the fray. What are they like? Yes, Hani Galbat are actually a kingdom of Assyrians, and their uh, ruler uh, really very much like likes to be the ruler of the entire Assyria. So they are much more on the offensive. They can recruit from very early in the campaign a lot of units. They can also uh, create buildings. Which that is a very handy uh, ability, actually. Can uh, create buildings which provide them with experience general that come at the very they can also uh, create and recruit from very early in the campaign a lot of units uh, yeah native units okay, faction they can units. also okay. uh, create buildings which provide them with experience general that come at a very affordable price yeah, that's actually very useful uh, getting units a lot I'll use early is super useful I'll have to explain the, the, the why it's useful because let's be honest this is lots of troops lots of troops is good especially in war because you're gonna need lots of troops to win battles hold fortifications and such yes and in addition to that they also have horsemen from very early in the campaign horsemen are quite fragile but also more maneuverable than chariots 
Their faction command in particular uh, grants them a resource, military training, which scales with the number of ongoing wars. And you can spend this resource to directly upgrade your units in an army of your choice. Which means that you need to go complete the total war. <laughs> the more wars you are participating in, the, the stronger your armies will, will get. Okay, so... So, multiple wars. That sounds... It sounds like they want you to do more war with the game. Like, well, that's that's good, because war is something you should be doing in a game called Total War. Yeah, that's, that's a smart design choice. I can't do it. So, would you say they fancy themselves as a kind of king of the universe, then? Yes, quite. Uh, king of the universe is actually the title of the supreme ruler of the Mesopotamian court. And the main difference between the Mesopotamian court and the court of other great powers at the time was that the Mesopotamian court and king of the universe had under him not a vizier or a high priest or whatever. He had kings below him. And in the really? game, these are the king of Hanigalbat, the king of Asher, the king of Elam, and the king of Babylon. Each of those positions, of the lesser kings, comes with their own plots. And This sounds very fascinating. Like they, this is well thought out with a lot of complex care, well, uh, a lot of complex ways of developing. Uh, I won't say developing your character, but of uh, developing your generals, developing your civilization, developing the family tree. Like, uh, wow, this is wow. They put a lot of effort and thought into this. Like if they do a medieval total war, they should give it to this studio, Sophia. Uh, Creative Assembly, Sophia. They should give it to them. Like, they're putting in that A-tier effort. Uh, the main Creative Assembly can still work on Warhammer if they want to. But if they want to do a Medieval 3, they should give it to Sophia. Rome 3 is a bad idea because Rome 2 was so hated for everyone. <laughs> oh, God. I remember that when that came out. I remember when that came out. It was such... That was such a disaster. We won't, we won't go into it this video. I might make a separate video about that. And intrigues and elite units. Actually, it's a bit of a trivia that um, the first king who used the King of the Universe title likely was uh, Sargon of Akkad, Sargon the Great. And to get their hands on the throne, the Sargon of Akkad ancient legacy sounds perfect. Yes, quite. The ancient legacy of Sargon is all about ambition. With it, you can have more ambitions at a time. You can have control over what kind of ambitions you receive, because there are different ambition archetypes. Some are related to politics, some are related to warfare. By completing these ambitions of a certain archetype, you get points, which in turn unlock your additional bonuses that are le relevant to the archetype. So if you complete warlike ambitions, you will get more bonuses that help you in war. In addition to that, with this ancient legacy, you gain access to grand ambitions. With grand ambitions, okay, a whole 27 minutes, you have 12. Bronze, you get victory points, you get three victory points. Nearby region with a landmark monument, eliminate king of the universe faction, oh. It provides you with uh, the opportunity to uh, complete more different and more difficult objectives but also their rewards are much greater and they provide you with victory points and in this way they are a valid way for you to achieve a campaign victory along with your ordinary conquering the world. Prince of Ur and protector of Nippur. So there we are, one new culture, seven total playable factions, two new ancient legacies, new gods and related mechanics and new regalia to chase. The ancient world is... Okay, let's... Next, uh, uh, one influence for lethal potions. Uh, legitimacy, workforce. The ancient world is spilling its secrets, but next time let's go somewhere a little bit more familiar. We're heading back to the Aegean. All right, I like it. Uh, I like what they guys all offer so far. Uh, if you want to see more from me, then hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.